Hey, I'm Nick and Gamer. Welcome back to Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2022. This is episode number eight. As I predicted at the end of the last episode, as we finished up the regular season, even though I have identical records, league records at six and ten with the 12th place team, according to the standings, it looked like they gave them the tiebreaker for whatever reason and that we were 13th. 13th means no conference playoffs. Here is that first round of the conference playoffs. And as you can see, we have missed out. So we did, in fact, get that 13th spot. And as I thought, it is your top 12. So you have eight teams here, as in fifth through 12th place in the regular season standings. They will single eliminate each other down to four. Those four will then go on the road to the top four seeds. And that's eight becomes four, becomes two, becomes your conference champion for the year. There is no relegation from Conference V, though, so we are safe on that part. We will be staying put here within the conference for another season, and we'll start to see our first reshaping of the squad with, well, our first set of recruits, which right now sits at literally just one. We do have a contact period, and this is the big one because half of our contact period time over the course of the year was the early contact period. But this, which is split up into two parts, this late contact period is where the majority of signings take place. So we've got a legitimate shot of getting not just one signed on this time, but getting two or three more players. And here's the second round matchups for the conference tournament. It's not something I'm overly worried about, especially that we're not even in it. So let's push right on ahead into the next round. But at least I'm showing you for those who want to see conference semis. It looks like we have one upset on the way through the quarterfinals with Southeast Houston getting through. Here's the results from the semis with North DC upsetting number one team in the league, Alamo Heights. Kennesaw beating, uh, easily beating Southeast Houston, though I suppose 12 points isn't that easy. Certainly isn't the 19 point pounding that uh, North DC was able to apply on Alamo Heights, who only lost two conference games all season. North DC beating Kennesaw State 77 69 to claim the conference championship and the automatic bid to the NCAA March Madness Tournament. So while I continue to kind of plug away on that long-term plan, that long-term goal of trying to get those guys that were cool on and just get that basic information out of them, one thing I have noticed, it does seem that I have leveled up a little bit. I mean, until we hit level 30 or even 31, we're not going to physically see a difference in my rating so it's hard to tell whether we've actually made progress or not but my theory is we are that that i am not a one anymore that it's not just during the off season entering the new year that it's recalculated based on you know whatever factors as i gate xp over the year i do think that it is a little more dynamic and here's why at the beginning of the season, I could talk to somebody that was cool, and majority of the time, they hang up on me immediately. And occasionally, they would just say, sorry, I'm busy tweeting, or I'm not interested right now, let's talk, or or just sorry, I wasn't paying attention. You know, they, they would give you a no, but they wouldn't hang up on you. That was occasional where the hang up on you was vast majority of the time. Now these guys that I'm cool on, they still hang up on me, but they hang up on me far less frequently. I don't succeed, but they don't straight up hang up on me. That suggests that unless it's a fluke, which I don't think it is because I've made a lot of phone calls. <laughs> I've made a lot of phone calls throughout this season. Something tells me that I'm not rated as a one in recruiting right now because while they don't give me the responses I need, they are hanging up a lot less often. 
So if that is in fact true, we've already made some progress. Not that it's the progress we need, right? I mean, I've only had three successes all season. I had one through the whole first half. I've had two in the second half. I'm not good, but it's better. Does that mean I'll have four through the first half of next season? That would be nice. If I have eight during the second half of the season, I mean, if, it, if we've improved that much, I'll take it. I'll take it, especially if it's dynamic and happening throughout continually and not just season to season to season because for that you got to wait a while before you're going to see any progress i can tell that the audio is way too loud in the background for this one but for those who have not seen it this is the selection show who makes the tournament we didn't make the tournament so don't worry about that part. Uh, but I will not watch the entire show, but I'll show you a brief, uh, maybe time lapse of it. Well, that felt like a bug that uh, needs a little addressing by selecting auto run. I was stuck sitting through the entire thing with no way to make it advance any quicker. Uh, I wanted to give you a little teaser to what the selection show was like, not sit through a 10 or 15 minute presentation of it. That being said, that's okay. I was able to do some other work on my other monitor in the meantime, as I'm sure you might have noticed, I wasn't looking uh, too terribly close at what was up. All right. Well, anyway, there is the initial. I am so shocked that Spokane gets the first round and of course gets Zaga, who is a one seed. Doesn't get to play in their home city. Whew harsh selection committee they were the number two overall wisconsin the number four overall so you would figure that preference would go to gonzaga and yet gonzaga don't get to play at home yeah crazy rough and then wisconsin they're nowhere near home playing in was uh, playing in wa washington for them uh, in fact it looked like let's see arizona they're going to be closer. They're going to have a little advantage in that one. UNLV and San Diego State, both closer to home. Our North DC who get the first round play in. And that's there. there's your perfect example of where we sit. We are the lowest rated conference that gets an automatic bid to the tournament. Therefore, the lowest tournament seed, and for those who aren't terribly familiar with the tournament, let me give you a very quick rundown. 64 teams, historically, make the tournament and then it's single elimination. Gosh, it's been a while now. I don't remember what year they first introduced it, but I want to say it's been about 10 years now. Plus or minus. They added four additional teams to the tournament. They were finding there was a couple new conferences out there. So there was new teams getting automatic bids and the at-larges where they were having a hard time selecting the teams they needed. And there was good teams getting left out. So more money is all it came down to ultimately, but they expanded the field to 68, which is a little silly in my opinion, but that's four additional teams so that means there's four additional games to be played and 
the qualifying round like technically the first round is once you get down to the 64 and what they do for those four additional teams or those eight teams that now fill those four slots for the first round is you have the four the last four in the four lowest at large bids meaning they didn't get an automatic qualifier there's 22 divisions right 22 champions of conference tournaments those 22 are guaranteed a spot automatic bids so if your tournament involves everybody and you are last place in your conference but you go to that conference tournament which isn't the case right you got to be top 12 in this game to make the conference tournament or at least the the way this is set up not all conferences are the same but for this 12 teams make it so you could be 12th place in your conference out of 16 teams and you can run the table in the conference tournament win that conference tournament be crowned conference champion you will make the ncaa tournament as one of those 22 automatic bids subtract that out of the 68 then there are 44 at large bids so you do not need to win your conference tournament to make the tournament but know this conference a way at the very very top they're going to have their conference tournament winner obviously make the tournament but they're going to have probably eight teams out of 16 make the tournament because of the prestige being so high because even though they beat each other up in the conference tournament they are going to have a non-conference schedule where they all 16 of them or probably 14 15 out of the 16 are going to beat up on everybody else because they are the best of the best and then when they get into the conference and beat each other up the ones that really get beat up the ones that finish at 3 and 13 in the conference that's going to hurt their record they're not going to make the tournament but those that are 8 and 8 and then won every game non-conference or like 10 out of 12 or 10 out of 11 conference non-conference games against a lot of pretty good teams and their entire season their entire schedule is stacked against the best teams in the country that they lost those eight games to are gonna have a high enough record that they get selected to the tournament anyway and then as you go down the conferences that list is just gonna get shorter and shorter it's not gonna be seven or eight teams it's gonna be three or four teams as you get down to you know f so just the top few teams in the league but as you get down further as you get down to the final you know eight conferences or so don't expect to see anybody besides the conference tourney winner make the tournament but anyway you have those eight teams okay that have that play in round now four of those are the last four at large bids as in the 46 teams that didn't get an automatic bid as in it might be that eighth and final team or seventh and final team from conference a that just barely had a good enough record to beat out others and they took them because well they have a lot of prestige they didn't have a great year but it's it's a big time team you can't leave them at home or it could be that last team that got in from that you know 13th division and they had the best record in the conference all season long and then they lost in the conference final in the tournament and it was like gosh they have such a good record but they're not that great of a team so they get they get in but they barely get in anyway those four play each other and they cut down to two the other four most years are going to be conferences 
21, 20, and 19. It's the worst four teams in the tournament. Mostly, that's going to be your last four conferences. So, North DC is one of those. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Youngstown State, if we look at them, they're one of those three conferences right above us, and they were the champions of that conference tournament. This hurt a little bit. The day we open the contact period, Sean Ross has already made his decision, and he is going to Portland State. So we lost out on that one, and that was definitely one of our higher targets. That's going to change what I do over uh, the coming weeks a little bit because he is absolutely somebody we were trying to get after. Of the three players that were cool on us, Sean Ross was that first target that I was after. So that vacates one scholarship. We're going to look to hand that off to uh, Nick Lee for now. Uh, Junior Collins transfer on that one coming in at point guard, a position we're very much going to need as we have two seniors there and and they're both going to be gone and we we could very much use somebody who's going to step in capable of playing right away when it comes to nick lee this is not what i wanted in a player but early on in this series we're going to have to settle for whatever we can get otherwise it's going to be walk-ons and the walk-ons are going to be likely even worse we need to build our skills and then start recruiting proper players now, in a year or two, I might be able to start doing that. I might start to be able to pick and choose a little bit. This first year, anyway. Oh, man, it's all about developing skills. I, I, that's all I can say. Uh, Nick Lee is terrible on defense and certainly can't shoot inside. But he'll score a little bit as a three-point shooter, and that's good with, with our schemes. Uh, his ball handling and passing are good enough that... Yeah. That's, that's all we can do. He cares about location. He's from California. Cares about playing time. That might be the right thing to recruit for him as playing time at point guard is going to be quite clearly an option. Uh, facilities won't help us any. Coach discipline isn't important enough for him anyway. Yeah, the location we'd get a slight bump, but the playing time we'd get a pretty solid bump from him on this one also from here we had one success with nick lee but look the other three came from the assistant coach so you are getting a little bit of help even though he's pretty bad too first round of visits none of the four that we have scholarship offers out on have signed with anybody so that's already a good sign uh, that doesn't mean that others on our list haven't. We wouldn't have had updates about that. They wouldn't tell us about that without a scholarship offer. So let's see what happens. Closier, somebody we were going for before that had been cool and then became not cool after visits the first round. Uh, Blackshear, somebody new that we've started going after. Woodbury was another one that we went after before that wasn't good. So we made no progress with these two previously, but we're trying to get Nick Lee is the one who was cool. We'll see if we've made any progress there. And then Blackshear, the new target. Uh, parents weren't too impressed. That wasn't terrible, but that definitely didn't bring us up a level at all. So that's probably not going to go down too well. We might want to think about talking to somebody else. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, this, this one's just no. And we continue to get that from him. He he just does not like us. Same with Woodbury. We're not getting anywhere with these guys. And, ah, same with Nick Lee. I'm guessing he's gone from cool down to nothing after that visit. That's not a good sign at all. Bad, bad week recruiting. Okay, Rich Lingle has signed. Is that Gonzaga? Yeah. Yeah, he signed with Gonzaga. Dang. Uh, well, let's get him off the list anyway. A quick look at the interested players. And David Watson is all that's left that hasn't already signed with someone. So that's that's big time worrying because A, he is way down the list. I mean, he is by far the lowest rated player in terms of the rankings. Uh, he does not have a good high school GPA. He barely made it on the SAT. He would definitely struggle here 
and he's not a quality player. And he's from Hawaii, so pitching location isn't going to help us either with him. So a lot of concerns. Plus, he plays shooting guard, which to Pina, the one guy we have been able to get, is a shooting guard. So it's a, a whole big, giant list of negatives. It's a quiet week for now. There's a little break between here and the final few weeks of active recruiting so let's go ahead and push forward again i'll show you what happened at the end of the tournament once we get there i think we're down to the final four at this stage and close here the first one of the four i've been after first one out he is heading to oregon state he did care about playing close to home uh, that's the same thing we've seen with others where they've picked portland state or oregon state we're going to see oregon uh, we're going to see UP, University of Portland, uh, those four are going to steal plenty of recruits from us early on, but those are our big targets because instead of having every college in the country as a better option here, there's only four that excuse me, serve as a better option. We come in fifth on that list, and if you get lucky and don't see a scholarship offer coming from one of those four then we land a pretty decent chance of recruiting one of those guys successfully here's a quick rundown for you of the tournament we are up to the championship game so we'll see what the results of that one are shortly but here's that quick look as michigan state came out of the pittsburgh region ahead of syracuse in the chicago region it was gonzaga ahead of missouri an 11 seed getting all the way to the finals on that one in the Orlando region, Michigan and Duke with Duke going through to the final four for the game. Devs will be happy with that one as, uh, the, the head of the, uh, the, the location of the game devs, as well as the head, the founder of Wolverine studios, Wolverine studios, as in Michigan Wolverines. That's he's, an alumnus of Michigan as I'm an alumnus of Oregon. Uh, and in the Spokane region, it is Wisconsin who got through. So we do see a number of one seeds. Here is your look at the final four. It is Duke who knocked off Wisconsin to make the finals against Gonzaga. Close win, 75-72 against Michigan State. So you saw three of the one seeds. So again, for those who are unfamiliar with the tournament, it's split up into four regional tournaments initially, and all the games take place within that region. And you'll have uh, you have 16 ranked spots. So there's four 1 to 16 ranks, where you have the 16 ranked shared and the 11 ranked shared with those extra teams that I was talking about, where you go from 68 down to 64. But that's 1 through 16 times 4. That's your 64. And so you ultimately you have four one seeds, and those are the four favorites. They're the top seeded team in each region. In this case, we saw three out of the four make it through, and we saw a single three seed upset the apple cart and get out of their region and make it to the what is known as the final four. And then now you have that championship, and that three seed happened to make it there. Duke with the prestige, no surprise by that one. They are excellent as a program in fact all four of these are quite excellent as programs no surprise to see any of them this deep in the tournament and it is gonzaga with the tournament victory now these are the conference awards with the center at alcorn state north dc guard southeast houston guard and the alamo heights coach taking the honors this year First team all-conference not including any of our guys and save for the second team all-conference meaning we don't make the short list of any top players no surprises we didn't necessarily have any standouts on the squad uh, we we very much had a by committee thing going with the team as points were spread out amongst about four players uh, Rebounds were spread out. Assists were spread out. There was no standouts really in any categories. Therefore, it makes perfect sense that a team that finished 13th out of 16 didn't make any lists. 
no worries. We'll get there eventually. Funny thing about our season was the goal was to not finish last. Finishing 13th out of 16 is not last. Not by much, but it's not last. And therefore, we had a good season. Not that the review actually matters. In this mode, I should not be able to be fired, though there's more than one box. One box says, don't be fired. One box says, easy requirements. So, which one takes precedence? Should be the don't be fired. But this is about building the program from the ground up. We don't want to risk getting fired over that one. This is stick with one team and see that team go from the 22nd conference to the first conference to winning NCAA titles. It's a long-term project. We don't need to be adding the pressure of getting fired along the way. With Glozier out, I have shifted our scholarship now to Jason Garrett. So Jason Garrett is the one we're now offering, and the reason for that is he is only one star, meaning there's probably going to be fewer teams going after him. And out of all my one stars, he, like Depina, is the only one with a higher overall, meaning he's a better player compared to these other guys around him, which would therefore be more useful for us to have. Also, as another player from Oregon, it does increase our chances of being able to recruit him successfully. With Nick Lee, last time we tried to pitch playing time. That did not pan out well for him. Therefore, this time around, we're going to switch that up and try to pitch location because he cared about that one as much as the playing time. The playing time one didn't go well, so might as well try the alternative, even though he's from California. It's the neighboring state. We're not that far away. And they don't take into account that we are in Portland, which is like the northern edge, and California is off the southern edge those who don't know the geography of the west coast and california is very large and very long and so if you're from say san diego you're a long ways away from portland not like east coast long way away but you know it, it's a bit further they don't take that into account they take into account that oregon is next to california and that's it there's no like gps tracking of what city you're actually in or what city they're actually in it's state so you could be at the far end of the state and they could be from the opposite far end of the state and you are still considered local that that's how the game's set up on that uh, there's talk of eventually doing gps with this but it's not in the game at this stage Blackshear I tried last time. I'm going to try Kevin Hunter this time. I've, get, I've got to just make attempts. And if we see something that resembles a positive response, then we want to ride that wave and see where we can get it. Because we only have a few chances at this. We only have a few weeks at this. And it's entirely possible that we could still sign some of these guys, even though they're not interested. The only way that happens, though, is if we are literally the only uh, the only school that has offered the only school that's offered a scholarship i don't know if they'll take it on zero interest though i don't know if they will uh, seems unlikely but it could happen it depends on the personality right they might go walk on somewhere rather than come to your school if they're not interested and go somewhere where they are interested that just didn't offer a scholarship. And that would really suck if that happens. But I don't see that happening with any of these three-star guys. It could happen with a two-star. It could definitely happen with a one-star. Uh, there'll be walk-ons in a lot of places. You know, a Nick Lee, for example, is a junior college guy. He might stay another year at his junior college and wait till next year to see who offers him then as opposed to come to our school if he's no longer interested. And Nick Lee has signed a letter of intent with Portland State. So Nick Lee is out. That's another one lost to in-city rival. In fact, there's three of us now in Portland in this game. Kevin Hunter can't see himself playing for us. Woodbury can't see himself playing for us. Nick Lee can't see himself playing for us. Uh, 
yeah, that's fine. We expected that. Jason Garrett. Ouch. 0 for 8. 0 for 8. We're not getting anywhere with this one. We are in the staff hiring period. But just so you know, myself and all three assistants all have two years remaining on our contracts. So we are not in a state. We don't have the finances to fire these guys anyway. And I'm pretty bad at a lot of things, which means I think, especially with a program with no prestige, it would be pretty challenging to try to get someone hired on. Though, honestly, I think in a couple of years, we'll be able to get better coaches than what we have right now. Uh, we'll, we'll certainly give that a shot. But for now, we'll have to stick with this bunch. Tony Lane going to Gonzaga. Glozier going to Oregon State. Nick Lee going to Portland State. That's three more off of our list. It's getting shorter and shorter. And I am not making progress. David Watson might be redundant to Tyson DePina, but we need something in terms of we, we just need to sign anybody. We need warm bodies. Uh, so he will get one of our available scholarships. We'll have one more in addition to that to try for somebody. I, I don't know yet who we'll go after. Maybe Sam Clark is the only other one-star guy. Might be a viable target. Sam Clark doesn't see himself playing for us. Woodbury, same. Garrett, same. Watson, parents were too impressed. This is one of those important things in this game. This is something that hasn't changed in the years that I've been playing it. And in, in order to alter the team long term, uh, you have a few options here. There is the, you once a year get to request to upgrade the facilities, increase the budget, or give yourself more time as in have them offer you a new contract. I'm not worried about that one. So we have two options. I don't expect them to say yes, but let's start with budget. Having more money to play with could help us out. But I think facilities actually is the long-term one that we really need. So you know what? Just do the right thing. Go for the facilities. But I think is in real life, I ask for that one too all the time. Uh, our school is by far the oldest. Our facilities are so run down and every handful of years they do new stuff. So I figure if you get in the ear long enough, they'll recognize that, hey, this is the school that needs a new gym. Request denied. <laughs> not putting that kind of money into a losing program oh no uh we just reached the end of this period i thought there was one more week that was it that was the last sighting day ouch we are still on one just one player Troy Depina is all there are transfers we'll have a chance at that one and we'll have to do what we can to try to get after we have scholarships available obviously there are 358 programs we didn't make the bottom of the list when it came to recruiting despite only getting a single player so we are not alone in the difficulties however we are very much near the bottom at 310 Tyson Depina is an okay player for a one-star guy and that was enough to well get us ahead of some program uh-oh folks I didn't know this one was coming did not know that this was coming but the independents are part of your promotion relegation system and the four teams relegated to independent were teams placed 13 through 16. we have been relegated four independents have made it up to conference v replacing the four of us at st paul cal san diego southeast louisville and st george we are now literally to the bottom with all of the zero prestige schools <sighs> we just have to have the best record out of the independence presumably to get promoted back up to conference v okay so we'll have an entire non-conference schedule for the entirety of the season upcoming that's okay that's okay we'll bounce back we faced relegation in our first season had no idea that was even possible but makes sense as there's only so many teams that didn't fit in now the good thing on this one is there aren't 16 independent teams 
that's the reason why there wasn't a conference v we'll find out how many teams there are when we go to start up but it is less than 16 so to be in the top four it's a shorter list and you don't even necessarily have to have anywhere near a 500 record to make that these are the worst of the worst schools so you just gotta be better than x amount to be in that top four i like that i like our chances of seeing our first promotion sooner now than before we just had to face relegation to have that scenario but you know that's okay all right folks that's gonna do it for this episode and this season the transfers are still to come we'll definitely be opening up with that first for the next episode and also one notable thing here is first season started slow with a number of things we had eight whole episodes for this first season now there are going to be seasons where we have eight episodes but that's not going to be for a long time coming seasons will go by a little bit faster there was a lot of introductions done as long as i'm terrible at recruiting you're not going to see anywhere near as much of the recruiting as long as we are terrible at basketball in general you know that whole winning thing as long as that's a real issue we'll be flying through some seasons because we have a manager who's you know ones across the board we've got to develop a little bit before this team's going to start to see progress so these next couple of seasons could go by fairly quickly i'm Kathleen gamer like comment subscribe and i'll see you next time have a good one be safe out there bye for now